First and foremost, as with this and with all things, we give all praise, all glory to the creator of heaven and earth, to the God of our fathers. And we say to him, Toda Yah for our lives. And um, I greet my family here. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Lakai. Y'all may be seated. As we continue to go through the, the Torah, beautiful words left on record for us Amen. by the Most High. And, um, I pray I can do these words tomorrow. And, um, how y'all feeling though, first of all? Oh. Everybody's well? Good, good, good. I was sitting in there trying to get my little thoughts together, but. Yeah. The, the, our drummers was going in today. Mm -hmm. I mean, they usually they usually do their thing, but you know maybe it's just because I was trying to study. But <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, they was doing, they was giving us some praise up to the Creator. Uh -huh. uh -huh. Chief Ooze even sounded a little good. But <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just that's just a joke. <laughs> that's just a joke. But we're gonna continue on in our services. And, um, we're going to be in the book of Exodus, uh -huh. Yetro. Yes. We're going to start at Exodus 18, verse 1. Uh -huh. Ready, Prince? Yeah. We're in the book of Exodus, chapter 18, starting from verse 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now Yetro, the priest of Midian, Moshe's father-in-law, heard of all that God had done for Moshe and for Israel, his people, how that Yehovah had brought Israel out of Egypt. Okay. Now... We didn't have no internet, no news channels, none of that stuff, That's TV right. back then. But that word got around. That's right. You know, and when that word get around, everybody hears the glory of the Most High and what mm -hmm. he has done. So you have to throw hearing this. He, he, he's giving praise to the Most High also. That's right. And yet throw Moshe's father-in-law took Zipporah, Moshe's wife, after he had sent her away, and her two sons, of whom the name of the one was Gershon, for he said, I have been a stranger in a strange land. And the name of the other was Eliezer, for the God of my father was my help, and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. Amen. And Yetro, Moshe's father-in-law, came with his sons and his wife unto Moshe, into the wilderness where he has encamped, at the mount of God. Okay, and, mm -hmm. now, Yetro, being like all fathers, you know, he's, um, he's, he's hearing these words that the, that the Most High has sent a, a messenger or that a messenger, people going around and talking about the great things that the Most High did. So once we hear, he hears of all the glory that the creator of heaven and earth did, mm -hmm. like I said, like most fathers, Yethro said, okay, grab my daughter up mm -hmm. and take her to her husband. Right. You know? Cause he was on the no backseat thing too, you know. <laughs> <laughs> he said, you know, Moshe had a little job to do, but the job is done now. Right. Take your wife and your kids, man. Right. Take them back, kids. Mm -hmm. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, yeah, through being the man he is, he took his his daughter to her husband. Mm -hmm. And he said unto Moshe, I thy father-in-law yet throw him coming unto thee, and thy wife and her two sons with thee. Amen. So he got with her. And Moshe went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed down and kissed him. And they asked each other of their welfare, and they came into the tent. And, and Moshe told his father-in-law all that Yahweh had done unto Pharaoh and to the Egyptians for Israel's sake, all the travail that had come upon them by the way, and how Yahweh delivered them. And Yethro rejoiced for all the goodness which Yahweh had done to Israel, and that he had delivered them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Okay, now, as with... Most men, brothers, even sisters, as most of us do, when you greet a person, you ask them of their welfare. Right. And, you know, this was no different. You know, we want to know how we come in here every Shabbat. Shalom. How was your week? That's right. You know, most of us say cold tov when you had the worst week of your life. Oh, cold tov. <laughs> you know your week wasn't good, but you made it through. That's right. So blessed be the most so high. Yeah. But... You know, them not seeing each other for a while. They're asking each other, well, how, how things went, you right. know? I mean, I heard talk of the messengers who came to me, but 
you know, tell me out your own lips, Moshe. Mm -hmm. And Moshe asking him if his welfare. Right. You know, as most men do. To make sure everything is good. And Yetro said, Blessed be Yehovah who have delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of Pharaoh who have delivered the people from under the hand of the Egyptians. Now I know that Yehovah is greater than all gods. Yea, for that they dealt proudly against them. Okay. Now Yetro, as most people who see the, the signs and the wonders of this great God, right. they have to come to say, look, your God is God. Mm -hmm. You know? I know people who've been in courtrooms, mm -hmm. in prison houses, as our Abba Yosef, and you prayed, and you asked the Most High for deliverance, mm -hmm. and when he delivered you, and them guys knew all the time that you was getting, and they seen you facing the east and praying, they said, yo, bro, your God is definitely God. Man. That's right. You know, he blessed you. He got you out of that situation. And they have to consider that. So as such, Yo, um, Yetro was saying now, he said, I know surely now that your God is God. That's Just right. from the things you told me and the wonders. Come see. And Yetro, Moshe's father-in-law, took a burnt offering and sacrifices for Yah. And Aharon came and all the elders of Israel to eat bread with Moshe's father-in-law before God. Amen. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moshe sat to judge the people. And the people stood about Moshe from the morning until the evening. All right. Now... He said, now, now I know that Jehovah is great, greater, greater than all gods, yea, for, for that he dealt proudly against them. And yet through Moshe's father took burnt offering and sacrifice for God. And Ahadon came and all the elders to Israel to eat, eat the bread with Moshe's mm -hmm. father-in-law before God. It don't say Moshe was here, but... It, we know obviously he was, he was there, but Aharon being the high priest and Yethro being a priest of Midian, Aharon and the elders came just to make sure, you know, you sacrifice it to the creator. We want to make sure this is done right. Mm. You know, right, right. You're giving it up to God. So they came over and they, they watched the, the whole thing. And when Moshe's father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, what is this thing that thou doest to the people? Why sittest thou thyself alone, and all the people stand about thee from morning unto even? Right. And Moshe said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of Yah. When they have a matter, it cometh from to me, and I judge between a man and his neighbor, and I make them know the statutes of Yah and his laws. Okay. It says, And it came to pass on the morrow that Moshe sat, sat to judge the people, and the people stood about him from morning to, until evening. Now, you have to say in this, if you, like, that's, that's the reason why we don't just have, like, one person just, just running the show. Because right. our people are very impatient people. Mm -hmm. So if they got to stand there from morning to evening, waiting for their turn, for their case to get heard, they, they get impatient. Uh -huh. You know, they start murmuring and talking stuff. And, you know, the whole situation, the whole case didn't change. They might catch another case on the line. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, so when Yetro heard this, he's like, he like, nah, this is not good. Bro. Right. He said, this is not the way this should go. Where we at? 17. Comes. And Moshe's father-in-law said unto him, the thing that thou doest is not good. Thou will surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee. For the thing is too heavy for thee. Thou art not able to perform it thyself alone. Hearken thou unto my voice. I will give thee counsel and Yah be with thee. Be thou for the people before Yah, and bring thou the causes unto Yah. And thou shalt teach them the statutes and the laws, and shalt show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work, and the work that they must do. Okay, now, once you see a thing, you know, and, and you, you feel in your heart of hearts that this thing ain't right. Right. Because people sometimes see things better, clearer from the outside than you do from the inside. Teach us. You sitting there, and you judging, but, and you don't, it, ain't, it ain't come to your conscience that, yeah, maybe I might need a little help with this because you know the Most High has been with you, and I'm sure you're giving good counsel, but you you know you're worrying the people. So he said this is not good. Mm -hmm. So he said, hold on, twenty one. Hold on, thou will surely wear away both thou and, and the, the people. people. That's right. Because people get impatient. You 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 worrying us standing here all day. Uh, I ain't got no pencil and paper. I forgot really what I wanted to complain about. And you're wearing yourself out. Right. 
And that's not a good thing, Moshe. You need help. You need help. Ask for help. Sometimes you get leadership that, that's going to do it all. Want to read, come up here, teach, <laughs> yeah. play a drum. Yeah, you got to relax. You, you can't wear yourself out that thin. Moreover, verse 21, thou shalt provide out of all the people able men, such as fear Yah, men of truth, Amen. hating unjust gain, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. Okay, so again, you see this thing, and you, you, you see what's going on here, and you say, Moshe, you need some help. Mm -hmm. And as it's, it's stated in the book of Deuteronomy, mm -hmm. 16, verse 18, it says, make thee judges and officers. Yes, sir. Judges and officers shalt thou make thee in all thy gates, which your whole thy God giveth thee tribe by tribe, and they shall judge the people with righteous judgment. Righteous judgment. And sometimes if we're trying to do something alone by yourself, it, you kind of you kind of get cloudy in there, and and your judgment ain't so righteous. And mm. sometimes you, you you judge upside down, and you you know, you see your 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 man there, and he's been bickering with this guy, and you just said, look, I'm just gonna get this one out the way quick. Right. You know, <laughs> you right, he wrong. Bye. <laughs> I ain't even hear his side. And people do that. Mm. So sometimes we need the counsel. That's we right. need you know. Some people with suggestions, you know, we need somebody to make suggestions. Listen, bro, I think that, um, that that call is off. So before we walk back in there and give them the judgment, let's think this thing through. Mm -hmm. You need those kind of people, and you need, and you dealing with the multitude like that, you need to make it for hundreds, fifties, tens, tens right. you know, thousands. So it ain't all on you. That's right. Come see. Verse 22. And let them judge the people at all seasons, and it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter they shall judge themselves. So shall they make it easier for thee and bear the burden with thee. So now you got judges that can bear the burden with you. You got right. judges that you don't have to hear every case. Everything don't have to come knocking on your door. Some of the things, you know, is, is just a minor thing, you know, a fender bender. You know, you got offices over tens or whatever. Yo, take that to, to chief such and such first. Because people wear you, wear you out, wear your phone out two in the morning calling you. Uh, and with something <laughs> trivial. I mean, you know, something that's, that you, you could have waited till the morning at least or call somebody else. But, you know, and that also wears us out. So... Yethro was giving him this advice. He said, look, man, he said, the big things, you know, they come to you because you go to God. You can go direct to God. Mm -hmm. They can pray to God, but you, you have that direct line that, and the wisdom that the Most High has instilled in you that the big things can come to you. But don't sweat the small stuff. Don't, you know, don't just go after every little case and, you know, and they said, look, if you're just listening to all this and listening to that, they say, you're going to hear your servants cursing you out. That's right. If, if you're just trying to stick your, your head in your ears and everything, you're going to say, wow, that's how they think about me? Mm -hmm. So some things you just push off. So that, take that over to such and such or, you know, and it ain't even got to get you. Some things, you know, I mean, Torah, yeah, he gave us a good system here of brotherhood. Mm -hmm. So sometimes people come and say, hey, Prince, about that thing the other day. I'm like, I don't know about that. Who you talk to? I talk to Chief, Chief Ooze. I said, well, obviously he fixed it. Or Chief <laughs> Michael fixed the problem. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It, it don't have to get to me. You know? Come see. Verse 23. If thou shalt do this thing and God command thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all this people also shall go to and also shall go to their place in peace. So Moshe hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law, and did all that he had said. And Moshe chose able men out of all Israel, and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And they judged the people at all seasons, the hard courses they brought unto Moshe, but every small matter they judged themselves. And Moshe let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way into his own land. Okay, and now, see, when you got more judges, that means, you know, you, you, you handle matters much quicker. 
expeditious. Mm-hmm. And, you know, everything don't come to you. But now the people can say, okay, I went to chief. I feel satisfied with, with that judgment. I can go on home. As, as opposed to I got to stand on this line and all I want to do is say dot, dot, dash. <laughs> I just, you know, I just got a little case here. But I got to, since I came later, I got to stand on the line and the sun is going down. So now you got other officers then you can um you can split this up, split the burden. You can go home early. Everybody get to go home early, satisfied. And then it says, and Moshe let his father-in-law Lord depart, mm-hmm. and he went his way into his own land. Now after everything is said and done, you know, like you say, your father-in-law he's a priest over there in Midian. He got his own troubles. He got his own things to deal with. So you say, you know, go in, you know, go in peace, you know. And then he. He goes on to his own land. Chapter 19. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the third month after the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. And when they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the wilderness of Sinai, they encamped in the wilderness. And there Israel encamped before them out. And Moshe went up unto Yah, and Jehovah called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagle's wings and brought you unto myself. Hallelujah. Now, therefore, if you will hearken unto my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then you shall be mine own treasure from among all peoples, for all the earth is mine. Amen. And you shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Okay. Now, we, um, we leave Egypt. We're going into, into Sinai. Mm-hmm. And he says, and they, and they were departed from Rephidim and were come to the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness, and there Israel encamped before the mount. Because now we're about to get more instructions. We're about to get, and that's, that's what this whole book is of instructions and, and different things that, that we should learn to live by. So he says, and Moshe went up unto God, and Jehovah called unto him out of the mount, saying, Thus, thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob and to the children of Israel. He says, you have seen what I did unto the Egyptians right. and how I bore you on eagles' mm-hmm. wings and brought you unto myself. Now you're giving up your resume. Right. Now you're telling the people, listen, y'all seen what I did. Right. Y'all seen my work that I, put, that I put in. So y'all know the kind of work I can put in. Y'all seen waters open up. Y'all seen how I put these plagues on this guy, you know, using his own gods and the diff- different things that he worshipped. Y'all seen all of this. So now that y'all know my resume, y'all know the works I can do, I think, I think it would be in your best interest, That's right. you know, to work with me and not against me. Mm-hmm. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Verse 7. And Moshe came and called for the elders of the people, and set before them all these words which Jehovah commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that Jehovah have spoken we will do. Okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, let me go back. Mm-hmm. All right. It says, Now therefore, if you will hearken unto my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be mine own treasure from among all the people. For well, all the earth is mine. So again, he's giving up the resume. But as with most of the things in here, it's got that big word in there. And if you read too fast, you might go past it. That if. Because a lot of things that we do or the things that happen to us is, is in the, the realm of if we do the right thing, you get this. But mm-hmm. if you don't, right. you get you that. Get that. So true. I'm leaving the ball in your court. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't blame this on nobody. I'm leaving the ball in your court. If you do the right thing, good things going to happen. If you do the wrong thing, you're going to get a mocker. That's right. You're going to have to get beat down. So it's on you. We did, Most High said, I didn't make no robots. Mm. He said, I made people and I gave them the good and the bad. The thou shalt and thou shalt do not do. Mm-hmm. So he gave us a choice in life. Yeah. And Moshe reported the words of the people unto Jehovah. Verse 9. Mm-hmm. And Jehovah said unto Moshe, Lo, I come unto thee in the thick cloud, 
that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and may also believe thee forever. And Moshe told the words of the people unto Jehovah. And Jehovah said unto Moshe, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their garments, and be ready against the third day. For the third day Jehovah will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And I shall set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not up into the mount, or touch the border of it, Whosoever toucheth the mount shall surely be put to death. No hand shall touch him, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the ram's horn soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. Okay, now, again, we are people that have to be told things like multiple times. Multiple times. <laughs> a lot, a lot, a lot of times. You know, so when we see things like this, and then we're going to see it again, it's because... We, you know, it's like, remember the Sabbath day to keep right. it holy. You ain't just going to read that one time, yeah. man, or you'll be forgotten. You'll be you know, forgotten right after you turn that page. So it comes multiple times. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Right. And as he's going to say with these things, he said, um, you know, be ready against the third day. Now, he gives us three days because some of us are dirtier than others. <laughs> we got to clean up our act. Mm -hmm. Some of us got more to clean up than others. You know, so some must need a time. So he said, okay, I'm going to give you three days to clean up yourself before you come before me. Mm -hmm. Because most high don't want you coming before him just any old way. That's right. As we say, we got, you got to get your prayers together, clean yourself up. You know, if you're, you know, if you're in a spot, you can clean up and do that. You know, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to go before most high anyway. That's why we say when we're doing a prayer, you know, we we want to take soil pampers out. We want to do certain things to try to, you know, make Teach us feel better about invoking the presence of the Most High. Teach Because it was told uh, to Israel, listen, go outside the camp, mm -hmm. you know, and dig a hole That's and right. do your business and then come back in. That's right. Because you praying with the rest of them in the camp, you know, and you, you just messed up all in your, in your tent. You know, Moshe, the Most High is not going to um, walk am amongst that. Right. He's not coming against uh, amongst the filth. So as with the, the Zoak and stuff is, is with us. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that when we come to the teachings, you know, you're not unclean. You know, you haven't done an unseemly thing. That's right. You know, you have these people out here that want to do little things on Friday night and then think they can just come up here like they all clean on s Sabbath day. Right. But that's, that's one whole day. Right. That's one whole day. And even we don't, we don't observe, we don't, well, we observe the whole day, but not as a, as a, a unit. But even in your house, you thinking, okay, I'm going to go to the camp in the morning. I got to make sure that my, my, my garbs are nice and ironed. Mm -hmm. I take my shower, you know, before sundown. So, yeah, so clean myself up, you know, and I can't get, do no unseemly thing or no, get unclean. So we have to make ourselves ready to go before the Lord, the Most High. That's right. Oh, yeah. Verse 14. And Moshe went down from the mountain to the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their garments. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not near woman. Come not near woman, mm -hmm. because that's a form of uncleanness. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't know if she's on a menstrual, or if y'all, you know, if you come... But then a woman, you unclean. That's so right. he said, listen, stay away from women. These three days, cleanse yourself up. Mm -hmm. Come see. And it came to pass on the third day when it was morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of a horn exceeding loud and all the people that were in the camp trembled. And Moshe brought forth the people out of the camp to meet Yah. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. Now Mount Sinai was all together on smoke because Jehovah descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the horn waxed louder and louder, Moshe spoke, and Yah answered him by a voice. And Jehovah came down upon Mount Sinai to the top of the mount, and Jehovah called Moshe to the top of the mount, and Moshe went up. And Jehovah said unto Moshe, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto Jehovah to gaze, and many of them perish. And let the priests also that come near to Jehovah sanctify themselves. Let Jehovah break forth upon them. All right. Now, again, the Moses is telling him, he said, listen, 
And Moshe brought the, the words of the people, brought forth the people out of the camp to meet God. Mm -hmm. So now they're coming before the Most High. So they can't see Most High face to face and live. So he said, I'm going to come in a cloud of smoke. He said, so gather them up so they can hear these words. And the people already said, listen, whatever you say we'll do. But yeah, they lie. They lie. But sometimes we do that, like we say many times, for the moment. You know, when you're scared, mm -hmm. when, when things ain't going your way, you say these prayers or, or you tell people, listen, man, I, if, if God get me out of this one, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And sometimes, you know, like, like when a, a father hears his daughter make a vow. That's you right. know, when you hear that, you say, nah, I don't think you can keep that, baby. Nah, I got to disallow that one. Huh? You might be saying that for the moment, you know. You're barren without child. You say, oh, Father, if you give me a child, you know, I'll, I'll do this and I'll do that. But you can't do that or you won't do that, you know. If you give it to me, I'll, I'll you know, do like they, like they did um, Samuel. So I'll, give it to, I'll give it over to the camp. Let them live, work in the camp. And my daughter be like, hey. I'll be like, daughter, daughter, no, 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 no. <laughs> I need my grandson over here, baby. He can go there and work clean up on some days, but those, just don't make no vows saying you're just going to give my grandson over to the camp. You know, so, I mean, you know, so if you hear these things, and that's, this is what we ask for, come she. And Moshe said unto Jehovah, the people cannot come up to Mount Sinai without discharge of sin, set bounds about the mount, and sanctify it. And Jehovah said unto him, go, get thee down. And thou shalt come up, thou and Aharon with thee. But let not the priests and the peoples break through to come up unto Jehovah, lest he break forth upon them. So Moshe went down unto the people and told them. Okay, so again, the Moshe, I told Moshe, go down there, tell the people what I told you to tell them. But Moshe being like, Moshe, they can't come up. You told us to put bounds in. He told us to, to block this area and block that area. Moshe said, no, go down. I know these people. Trust and believe me, they're going to want to try to take a peek. Some of them going to look and see that, that, that the shown ream ain't there. They're going to try to slide off and, and touch them out because we don't believe. Stove so, so stinks sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You can tell children that the stove is hot, but mm -hmm. as soon as you turn your back, ah, and they come to you wanting you, you to kiss it and make it better. I told you not to do it. Mm -hmm. So... He's warning them again. He's saying, go down and tell my people to uh, don't try it. He said, then you come up with Aharon. Tell the priest don't even come over here. Come Chapter 20, hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Yah spoke all these words, saying, I am Yehovah thy God who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee a graven image, nor any man of likeness. Of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Okay. Now, this is the good part. Uh -huh. I mean, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> but uh, now, we get in a few commandments. That's right. You know, people just say the Ten Commandments and think that's it. Right. But we have commandments, laws, statutes, judgments, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which come up to the 613. So, what he's giving us now is... The Most High is saying these words. He said, I am Jehovah thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Again, my, re my resume. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you who I am and what I did for you. He says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now, y'all just seen what I did to Pharaoh mm -hmm. and his gods. Because mm -hmm. he wanted to play games talking about I know not of this God. Huh? But now, you know, he, he know who I am now. So... The Most High is saying, y'all seen what I did to them? He says, so y'all can't have no other gods around me. Y'all can't right. make no graven images mm -hmm. or little things that, that you want to worship and bow down to. Mm -hmm. Come see. Thou shalt not bow down unto them, nor serve them. For I, Jehovah thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto the thousandth generation of them that love me and keep my commandments. Okay, again. Now, I'm letting you know that I'm a jealous God. I'm a jealous husband. Mm -hmm. 
I can't see my wife just sitting around with a bunch of men or, or something for too long. Mm -hmm. My jealousy, like, what's they talking about that long? Okay. What kind, of, what kind of meeting they having over there that long? Mm -hmm. so, so he's a jealous God, so we can't play with this God and think, you know, well, you know, I, I mean, I know there's a God, but, you know, I just, I just got this little thing here that, you know, when I need something to pray to, we can't, we can't play them games. He said nothing in the heaven above. We can't find a bird or the sun or the moon or the stars and worship. We can't do the, the horoscope thing and, and get all deep into the stars. We can't do that. Can't be sun worshipers. Mm. No sun, S-U-N or S-O-N. That's right. He said, he's, you know, we can't, nothing on the earth below. That's right. He said, no man, you can't worship. You can't worship man. You can't worship woman. You can't worship an animal, a right. cow. You can't worship your car. Mm -hmm. so nothing on earth. Huh? You got that, sun, that Saturday, Sunday ritual. You do, I got to wash my car every Sunday. We well, you know, I'm, I'm giving y'all the benefit of the doubt. I know you ain't going to do it Saturday morning. I think. Maybe. <laughs> All right, well, you got to have, you know. And we get rituals, and when you go too deep into your ritual, it, it's, it's actually a form of worship. Yeah. You know, when you, you know, I mean, we have a certain thing, like you say, okay, I do my morning prayer at 8 o'clock. You're praying to the Most High. So you got that, that ritual, you wake up, you 8 o'clock, alarm set, get the Most High your prayers. But if you start going crazy, oh, man, the alarm didn't go off. Ah, man. I can't do my 8 o'clock prayer. Mm. What am I going to do? Do the 9 o'clock. <laughs> do it when you get out. You know, but some people, you know, they, you know, you go overboard for certain things. You know, car get an accident, hopefully you had insurance. Oh, that was my baby. You know, people, you know, and you get, you get like that too much, you know, you, you, you start take praise away from the creator, mm -hmm. which is not a good thing. Oh, yeah, bro. Verse 7. Thou shalt not take the name of Jehovah thy God in vain. For Jehovah will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Okay, and a lot of us will say, oh, man, I never take Jehovah's name in vain. Right. You know, I would never do nothing like that. Now, that's, that's going too far out of the box. <laughs> but when you <laughs> are named Yeriel, mm -hmm. which means the God, foundation of God, or God is my foundation, and I'm caught doing unseemly things with that name, I'm pretty much taking the name of the name, the most high in vain because I'm supposed to be a foundation or he's supposed to be my foundation mm -hmm. and I'm out here doing all kind of unseemly things. Right. And everybody, yo, Yariel, yo, y'all see how Yariel get down? Mm. Huh? Yeah, he ain't supposed to be out here Friday, but he come out here for the brothers and just take a drink or two. Mm. It don't look good. Nope. Don't look good for me. It don't look good for my people, my family. And it don't look good for the most high. When he right. told you to take the shot bottle off, rest yourself. And you take it upon yourself to say, oh, I, you know, I got to work. I got to do this work. So, like they said, one, one shot bottle out the month ain't going to hurt. It's going to hurt. You're going to feel it. You think that little extra money is going to save you from God? Nah. Whatever you was trying to make that money for probably ain't going to work. So we could take his name in vain in a lot of different things. That's you know? right. Like I said, people be out here gambling and, ah, and you know, say certain things out their mouth. I ain't going to say it, but certain, certain things you say out your mouth, you know, you, you're taking the most high name in vain. So we have to be careful, you know, how we use, how we use this country. Mm -hmm. Remember the Shabbat day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is a Shabbat unto your whole thy God. In it thou shalt not do any man of work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Okay, now, he says, six days we should do all our labor and all our work, but the seventh day is for your holy God. You know, I mean, and he could have said one day. You, you, you can get some work one day and the other six is mine. Right. Give me, give me the praise. But he said, I'll take one out of there. because, And not so much for me. 
Because I know my people. I right. know y'all need the rest. I know you will burn yourself out That's if right. I don't put a stipulation on here. Mm. If I don't put some boundaries on here. So look, you got six days to do all your stuff. Get your stuff together. Get everything together. And on that seventh day, you sit back. You know? And do as you should be doing every day. Give thanks to Yah. Give thanks to give God the glory for however your week went. It's like sometimes they don't they don't go that good. But if you made it through it, you know, like you said, if you live to fight another day. That's right. Torah Yah. Torah Yah. And it says, it says, Thou, mm -hmm. nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor the stranger that is within your gates, everybody in your confines, mm -hmm. all your animals, everything got to gotta rest. That's right. You can't tell you, listen, I can't work, servant, but you open the store this day, you know. Yeah. Mm. You, you handle all that because I can't work, you know. The stranger within your gates. Hey, you don't do this thing. Can you come and turn the stove on for me and do this? You know, sometimes you live. I mean, with, with family that's, that's not doing his law. So that's like a stranger within your gate. They, they're not doing Shabbat with you. But you can't utilize them to do the work that you ain't supposed to be doing. For in six days, your whole made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested on the seventh day, Wherefore, your whole blessed the Shabbat day and hallowed it. All right. Now, he's, again, he's giving resume. He says, for in, for in six days, your whole made heaven and earth, right. the sea and all the, that in them is, mm -hmm. and rested on the seventh day. Wherefore, your whole blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. He hallowed it. He made it holy. The Shabbat day is a day, and he didn't have the rest. The Most High don't need no rest. But, but you live by example. You know, like, like we were just talking the other day, you got people, I mean, that, that raise their children and say, look, you do as I say, not as I do. Mm. That's fair. How you gonna tell your child or somebody younger than that you, you mentored, listen, do as I say, don't do as I do. And then they see you do all kind of, all kind of disgusting things, right. all kind of despicable things, all kind of things that are against God's law. But you tell them, don't do that. Just do what I say. I'm going to read this, these laws to you, and that's what you do. Never mind what you see me do. Never mind you see me light up a cigarette on a Shabbat, and I will be kindling a fire. You better not kindle no fire. Mm, no, it don't work like that. It don't work like that. People do just the opposite, of, you know. If you say, look, don't do this, they're going to do it. Unless they see that you're not doing it. You gotta learn to live by example. You can, just, like you said, you can show people better than you can tell them. That's a fact. So if they see you getting up every morning, rising up to go to Shabbat, you know that one day you trying to get a little extra nap. Abba, Shabbat, Shabbat time. You get up. Ah oh, yeah yeah yeah. I gotta get up because they know they know that's how that, how it go. But um, if you get it at their age and they be like, yo. Get up and go to Shabbat, and then you go back to bed. Nah. Are you sick, Albert? Nah, I'm just tired. Mm. I just didn't know. I worked, I worked a couple of doubles this week and all of that. But you go, you go, on, you go on to teach us now. Huh? You listen to what Chief and them got to say. Mm. I'll see you when you get back. Don't, it don't work too long like that. Come see. Honor thy father and thy mother. That thy days may be long upon the land which your whole thy God giveth thee. This is major. Yes, sir. This is major right yes, here. Yes, sir. They all major, but honoring your parents, the first gods that you knew of, mm -hmm. the gods that, that nurtured you and brought you from a baby to where you at today. They say you gotta honor these parents. You gotta you gotta you gotta look at them and, and such and never try to do nothing that hurt them. If they are, 300,000 miles away from you. If you're in New York and they're in California, you'd be like, no, Albert and Emma wouldn't like me doing this here. Mm -hmm. This ain't right. God wouldn't like me doing it, but Albert and Emma, if they got wind I was doing something like this, it would really break their hearts. 
and you got to be at such a a, a, a mental that I would never want to do nothing that, that dishonors my parents because I'd definitely be dishonoring God. Come see. Thou shalt not murder. Thou shalt not murder. Now, in some of these books, it says thou shalt not kill. But that's in the translation. We, we, murder is when you kill a person for, for no apparent reason. They've done nothing to hurt you. They, they've done nothing but good for you. Mm -hmm. And you just, you just one of them jealous type of people, you know, with, with this ego. Yo, oh, man, I never liked this dude, man. And you wait till your moment, you catch him off guard, mm -hmm. and you kill him. You murder him. Murder is to shoot that deer just to put his head on your wall. Mm. You don't want to eat the, the, the kosher meat. You just want his head on the wall for a trophy. You, mur you murdered that, that animal. Yeah. So it's the difference between murder and killing. Mm -hmm. If you go to war, you're going to have to do some killing. Right. You're going to have to do some, you know, if you want to go home. That's right. Huh? I said, better is he who taketh off his armor than he who put it on. That's right. <laughs> That's a fact. <laughs> Putting it on is easy. But everybody don't make it to home to take, to take it off and say, oh, right. man, I had a victorious day at the war. I made it home. Come see. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Now, adultery is, you know, when a woman has a husband and sleeps with another man, She's committing adultery. She's an adulteress, he's an adulterer, or vice versa, however it go. But, I mean, men can have more than one wife. It's, it says it's acceptable here if a man have two wives, so, I mean, it's written in the book. But when a woman is betrothed or marries another man, and another man come and lie with her, that guy, that guy got to get put to death. Mm -hmm. But if she if she's cheating on her, both of them gotta get put to death. Correct. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not steal. One of the um the the, the commandments that we try to make a, a way out of, mm -hmm. you know, that's the enemy or that's this. <laughs> I ain't stealing from him. I just Literally. Went up in his face and stuck my gun and I robbed him. Robbing and stealing is different. Listen, if it don't belong to you, don't put your hands on it. <laughs> That's it's it. not yours. That, huh? it. You can't come in my house or in this house and see, I look over there, I see that $20 bill. I say, ah, too many people in now and I'll wait till I get ready to get off. Take, you know, you got to um, take it to the treasures. Listen, man, somebody might come here. Or the lost and found say somebody might come in and say, um, I lost my twenty dollar bill. Or who was sitting over here last? Right. You know? So you can't find nothing. You can't find nothing in my house. You can't find nothing outside. <laughs> and and it it got a wallet. Say Betsy Jones, mm -hmm. 1537, Sterling Place. Brooklyn, New York, 11233, three, apartment 3F. <laughs> Take it back. I don't know her. I found this. And it got a stack of 20s in here. Take You're it back. You're stealing. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you ain't know her before, you know her now. That's a fact. That's Bessie. <laughs> huh? She might become your best friend. But, you know, we can't make, you know, I'm liberating. Yeah. Well, I'm liberating. I'm, I'm getting my, my 40 acres in the mule from Macy's. <laughs> For From Macy's. Macy's, I'm in Macy's boosting. I'm liberating. Oh, man. Can't, Can't do, do it. No, sir. Don't you? Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Okay. Now, they got this new thing out. We probably had it out for a little while now. If you see something, say something. Mm -hmm. But on the reverse tip of that, if you don't see nothing, don't say nothing. <laughs> don't be no false witness. Yeah. Don't come up because you and such and such was talking on the phone. They say, yo, matter of fact, did you hear what happened um, 
to, to Yohanatan? Mm -hmm. Nah, and they give you the whole juicy rundown. Now you acting like you're a witness. You didn't see it. You don't know what happened. You just know what somebody told you. Mm -hmm. But now that you done heard this juicy story, when you take it to somebody, it's like you was there. It's like you seen it out your own two eyes. They say you become a false witness against your neighbor. You don't start saying stuff, and, and once we do get the story, we got to juicing it up a little bit. So you done added your own two cents to it, and it's getting juicier and juicier. By the time this guy go to trial, he done. Because, mm. you know, false witnesses that came up, and it's, and it's like I was there. Mm -hmm. Come see. So we can't do that. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Okay. Now, covetousness. Mm -hmm. Now, it says you can't cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. You can't see your neighbor with something and say, man, I like to have that right there. If I can get that blue garment from Prince Yeri, huh? he said, man, I like, I've been watching that ever since he was up there teaching. I ain't talking about you, man. Just, I, I've been watching that since he was teaching. Or if I can get that garment. You covered in my stuff. And the bad thing about covetousness is if you covered your neighbor's house, that's going to lead to, to probably robbing. You're going to, you know your neighbor's hours. You know when he gets on, when he goes away, he told you that he's going to Jamaica for about two weeks. You got all this information. And mm -hmm. he's like, yo, he had this thing in his crib. Ah, man, I love that picture. And I know he ain't going to be home. And you help yourself. Mm. Huh? It lead to stealing. Mm -hmm. So you break in two. Yeah. It lead to murder. Mm -hmm. They had people in ancient times. Listen, they want your wife. They got to kill you. Mm -hmm. They kill you for your wife. They won't do the adultery thing while he alive, but boom. Oh, he dead now. <laughs> they take your wife. And that's covering a woman. Mm -hmm. You cover her so much that you murder her, her husband. Right. So this is what viciousness leads to. When we look at other people's stuff too long, you know, and, and you just get that sight where I don't want nothing like his. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, and uh, that chain looked like it was just specially made too. I don't want nothing similar. I want that one right there. Mm. I want those, those commandments right there on his neck. <laughs> and wow. it leads to some other things. Mm -hmm. So we got to be careful, you know, how long we're in with what mindset we look at our brother or our sister's stuff because it could, it could lead further. Just be happy for him. Wow, mm -hmm. oh, man, that's nice, man. God bless you. Amen. Come see. And all the people perceived the thunderings and the lightnings and the voice of the horn and the mountain smoke. And then when the people saw it, they trembled and stood afar off. And they said unto Moshe, Speak thou with us, and we will hear. But let not y'all speak with us lest we die. Okay, again, here go our people. Once we see something that, that really like scares us, or we see ourselves, like I said earlier, in a predicament that really scares us, mm -hmm. and we start making these promises, and we're like, oh, that, that was a fearful moment. Mm -hmm. You know, I said, man, you, they, some people go to the priest, or you go to your, your rabbi, look, man. I need you to put some prayers up for me and do this. Speak to God for me, man. I'm, I'm scared. You know? They said, but whatever God tell you, we're going to do it. Lies. Mm -hmm. Again, <laughs> you, you, you lie. You may feel like that at that moment, but we say stuff sometimes and we can't keep it. It's like a, a vow. It's better not to vow than vow, a vow that you can't keep or you won't keep. You don't have to vow. But when you come up there tell me, yo, whatever God tell you to do, for us to do, we're going to do it. Now you want to go through a man to get to God. I mean, although he's a godly man, but we already know that. I mean, 
you, if you don't feel clean enough to go before the Most High yourself, I mean, we say prayers, you know, all together, but sometimes you got, because you're the only one that know. And being a man, I can come back and tell you anything. God said, give me that chain off your neck and give me your next three paychecks. Because you said whatever God said you do. Even though you know God don't work like that, you know, man will. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm not saying nothing about Moshe because he was a great guy. But certain men, if you tell them that whatever God tell you, we're going to do. And Moshe said unto the people, fear not, for Yah has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before you that he sin not. He said he came to prove you. Sometimes, people, you need a little shaking up in your life. Because sometimes we get too comfortable, and you know whether you really mean to or not, we start making mistakes. We start getting in places where, you know, I, I'm God's gift to man. You know, He said God came to prove y'all so that y'all sin not. Sometimes you're gonna you're gonna get a little one of them. Wake up. You're gonna get that from the Most High. He's gonna give you a shake up. He's gonna put something in your life that you you like. Wow. You, you fear, and it's gonna fear you. It's like, yo, I've been a little off here, you know. I've, I've been having some, 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 some bad mentals, you know. Mm -hmm. My, most I can read the mind. He yes. read the mind just like he reads your lips and your words. That's a fact. So sometimes he gotta put a little jolt in you. Yes, he got, you know, he gotta make you snap back. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. So he said, don't, don't be all scared like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, keep the fear, God. But don't, don't get all scared with y'all. Y'all all over the place. Just, um, just fear God and, and, and keep his commandments mm -hmm. and say he's doing this so that y'all sin not. Where, where we at? In oh. the middle. Come fear on. not, for y'all has come to prove, prove you and that his fear may be before you that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, but Moshe drew near into the thick darkness where God was. And Yehoah said unto Moshe, Thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, Ye yourselves have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, or gods of gold. Ye shall not make unto you, and all of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thine oxen. In every place where I cause my name to be mentioned, I will come unto thee and bless thee. Okay. Again, we get in that warning, because the Most High is saying, um, he says, and Jehovah said unto Moshe, thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. ye yourselves have seen, seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me gods of, gods of silver, gods mm -hmm. of gold. Ye shall not make unto you again. Because we got to constantly be reminded. We, we can't make no idols That's or right. anything else that we're going to couple up with God and say, well, I know created is created, but it's just that this little thing here when, you know, when I can't sleep good at night, I, I, I you know, I cuddle on to this and, and I pray and I talk with this. Mm -hmm. We can't have that. The most mm -hmm. high sin, you've seen, you seen my work. I put my work in. I'm giving you my resume, but I'm just reminding you, don't try to couple me because, again, as you said earlier, I'm a jealous God. And when you're jealous, you're going you're gonna to show some rage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if thou make me an altar of stone, I shall not build it of hewn stone. For if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast profaned it. Neither shalt thou go by steps unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be not uncovered thereon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, if thou make it an altar of stone, thou shalt, thou shalt not build it with hewn stones, for if thou lift it up thy tool upon it, thou hast profaned it. Mm. The Most High is a perfect God. That's right. yeah. Teach us. The Most High, he don't, he don't need no adjustments, no, no, no nothing. He's a perfect God. So he said, if y'all start chiseling all of here, you know, I, I put everything here. I put everything you need to build this altar. Right. And he says, neither shall thou go up by steps unto mine altar, that thy nakedness be not uncovered thereon. Okay, now, we wore robes back in them days. They said, don't go up no, no whole bunch of steps. 
so that, you know, people did that, you know, because we want to put ourselves on a pedestal sometimes. You, know, yeah. you, you want to go up and people look down, you look down on the people. Yeah. But if you go up too far, you know, say people going to see your nakedness. Yeah. So, say be careful of these things. And I pray that the Most High gave us something out of this. And as we always say, any mistakes I may have made of those of my own, mm -hmm. because the Most High is perfect. Hallelujah. 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 So Hallelujah.